from the trip. I'd like to confirm a quote. Get the right around for two hours. Would you come and write me how much money was involved? Was it over a thousand dollars? Was it over ten thousand dollars? I'm waiting for your last graph. You got it, Art? Come on. Rosenthal's story came in long. Is Billy's animal regulation thing long, too? Not anymore. Mm-hmm. Where's Kendall? He's been late every night this week. I hung around and waited for him last night, Lou. It's your turn tonight. I'm not even going to ask about my story because I know if you've done anything uh, substantial to it, you'll let me know. Right. Good night. Good night. What are you doing to my story, Art? <laughs> you used the term helpless kittens three times. And? Well, I can see where you're coming from, Miss Animal Lover. Oh, come on, Art. This is a straightforward, absolutely detached story about animal regulations. You have cat hair on your blouse. Do I? <laughs> Unless you spent the whole afternoon dancing with men in Angora sweaters. <laughs> I'm here. Santa Ana's really blowing out there. Yeah, I can see it really made a mess of your hair. Who's got the sheet? Oh, here you go. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no. You gotta get me off this. What's your problem? They got him assigned to the insider beat. Insider? Doing what? I don't want to stand outside the Mimosa Gardens all night in the wind, waiting to get a picture of a nightclub singer for some gossip column. Larry Fox is not just a nightclub singer. His ex-wife just got $10 million in a divorce settlement. For 20 years of putting up with Larry Fox, half a million a year is barely the minimum wage. The glitter, Pete. I hate it. All the other photogs love it. They know that what Insider can't use, they can sell to the Fan Max. Insider? Who is she, anyway? Why does it have to be a she? I heard it was that weird guy that works on the night shift. <laughs> All the guys on the night shift are weird. <laughs> Billy, what have you got for tomorrow? Nothing that won't keep. What have you got? Why don't you do something on the Santa Anas? Oh, sure. Woman blown off bus bench, okay. No, no. There's a psychologist at LAU who studies how behavior is affected by changes in the weather. Yeah? Interesting, huh? Is everybody griping about their assignment on general principle or because the wind is blowing? You ever hear of the Fane Bavarian? Fern. It's pronounced Fern. Fern Bavarian. It's a hot, dry wind that blows in Europe. It's like the Santa Ana. There have been a lot of behavior studies linking depression with the fun. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to track down some of those studies. Ooh, ooh, and talk to law enforcement. I bet they notice changes. You know what would be fun? Fern. People in uh, different service occupations, uh, see if they've picked up on it. What kind of time are we talking about? I want it tomorrow. No. If the wind stopped blowing, it's no longer a story. Do it on the phone in our library. The library as well. Keep it light. Breezy. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hal. Listen, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. Boy, I guess it's really blowing out there tonight, huh? Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, we gotta get going. But the freeway's a mess. Mm hmm Okay, well, have a good night. Good night, Billy. Good night. Al! Uh, still driving the ladies crazy? No, sure. 
Hey, uh, you doing anything tonight? Oh. Well, I could be here a while waiting for our friend Kendall. Again? Yeah. His excuses depress me. The one I hate most is about how bad the traffic was coming back from the beach. How about a night on the town? Where's Mary? San Francisco. Oh, well, the cat's away, huh? How does this sound to you? Yeah. Dinner at Blackie's Ringside. I never left the desk all day. I'm starved. And then to Conscious Hardware to help me pick out a chainsaw. That's what I love about L.A. Where else would you find a hardware store open 24 hours a day? See, we've got this jack o -randa tree that's dropping stuff on the patio, and I'm going to cut it down. And Marion is scared to death I'll cut my arm off if I get a chainsaw. Tonight sounds good. You mind waiting till Kendall shows up? If we have to. Uh, has the old emperor croaked yet? Show a little respect, huh? Has Emperor Bacardo shuffled off his mortal coil yet? No, but I got a hunch you're going to lose your bet tonight. Not a chance. Old desperates always die on the day shift. Want to double the bet? You're on. Let's get this show on the road. Kendall isn't here yet. Seconds before anyone noticed, the assistant city editor moved from his desk, slipped into his jacket, and quietly stole from the city room. He's going home to work on his novel. Night, guys. Good night. Good night. Does Kendall think that just because I'm a bachelor, I don't have another life? We've got a chainsaw to buy. Right. Where is he? Sorry, desk. Where are you? Yeah, Hugh. Sorry doesn't get you here. How not that bad is it? A broken collarbone qualifies as bad, Hugh. What happened? He broke his collarbone. I know. How'd he do it? How'd you do it? Oh, gee. What? Oh, gee. Oh, what? What? My. He swerved to avoid a coyote and hit a parked car. <laughs> Why, you? No. No, no, no. No problem. No problem. Take care of yourself. You hear? No problem. We'll find somebody to replace you. Sure. All right. Charlie says take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Who are you going to get to cover for him? Me. I'm not so crazy about you having that chainsaw either. It's not going to be half as much fun without you. Mm. Good night, Lou. Good night. Listen up, guys. Kendall is sick, so I guess you're stuck with me for this shift. Good, good. Just keep on working. Well, I guess you can spare me for a couple of minutes while I run to the cafeteria and grab a bite. Forget it. Huh? Cafeteria closes at 6. Forget it. It does. I guess I'm stuck with candy. The machines never close. They never work, either. I wouldn't sit in that chair. What? A guy died in that chair one night. When? Twelve years ago. I sit in this chair every day, all day. Sure. Days. Suit yourself. Say that's Pirates Phillies. I don't have that. This is a city desk. Try sports. Sports is out to dinner at 8 o'clock. Fine. Call sports at 8. Would it have uh, killed you to uh, look up the score? I'm busy. Why should I look up the score for every bozo that calls? Because that bozo is a press room foreman and he calls every night at this time. You may live to regret what you just did. Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. This woman's body is not really as good as it looks. What's her secret? Playtex secrets. Matching bras and panty slimmers with hidden panels that flatten and support. Playtex secrets. It's your secret. 
why pour, measure, lug, splash, and push to clean your hardwood floors. When there's new Mop & Glow hardwood floor cleaner, just squirt and mop. No dulling residue, no rinsing. It couldn't be easier. New Mop & Glow hardwood floor cleaner. One step away from clean. Any sign of them yet? Nope. Execute. But move, move, move. Huh. Where are they? Well, I'm sure they're on their way. Don't worry. They'll make it. They're coming. <laughs> I see them. Here. Here. Toy Story toys have arrived at Burger King with the stars from the magical Disney movie. Your kids can collect all six high-quality toys, one with every great-tasting $1.99 Kids Club meal, only at Burger King. Yeah, I knew you guys would make it. The $1.99 Kids Club meal at Burger King. I love having friends over, especially during the holidays. Pure One helps make our home really wonderful this time of the year. Finding the perfect gift is something I really enjoy. I usually overdo it. That's the fun of it. It is the best store for exploring. <laughs> I go to Pier 1, I find what I want. It's easy. There's Pier 1 on my tree and under my tree. Of course, my friends think I'm a genius. Pier 1 Imports, a world of holiday treasures. a and returns to Lou Brand. You handle the phone checks, right? LAPD, Sheriff, Coast Guard, CHP, LAX, and Pizza Prana. When I leave my brown bag in the fridge at home. Mm -hmm. Call the pizza guy and first get me two of whatever you're having. Can't. Nobody to pick it up. Where's the copy kit? On his way to the Orange County Airport to get Rossi's car. Why? Because when Rossi flew back from the Blanchard trial, he forgot that he'd driven himself to the airport, and he took a cab home. Mm-hmm. Day guys. Mm -hmm. You're spoiling it. Roy? Do you read uh, Hugh Kennel's writing? Sure. What's it say? Heifer, ear, thuff. Well, gee, that's really wonderful, Roy. You think you could uh, tell me what it means? Heifer, ear, thuff. You don't suppose he keeps cows, do you? Ear. Did he say anything to you about an ear story? Could be important. Don't sweat it, Lou. There hasn't been an ear story yet that didn't keep. I'm gonna make my checks. Roy? Why do you call Hal Padre? Oh. He's some kind of mail order minister. He's got this deal where he scatters people's ashes at sea. So he likes to be called that? He hates it. Hiya, Sergeant. This is Sackage. Yeah. Well, I got a favor. I met this Dolly last night, and I promised to get a ticket fixed for her. <laughs> Hell yes, it was a moving violation. <laughs> listen, Ken. Ken, listen. You, uh, you got anything for us? You broke his collarbone. Not for a week. I'm not giving you the runaround. The man's not here. Good evening, Officer Morris. This is Roy Sackage of the Los Angeles Tribune. Uh, I wondered if you'd have a minute or two to fill me in on CHP activity this evening, sir. Uh-huh. And uh, how many lanes would that be blocking? Yes, sir. And Chief Justice uh, Berger, Rehnquist, Brennan, Stewart, Uh, how, how many is that? Only seven? Ah, uh, di did I say a Rehnquist? Huh? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Donner and Blitzen. Listen, Marcel Marceau is giving a command performance here, and I gotta go. Uh, my pleasure. I didn't mean for you to hang up. Did you bring me dinner? No, I'm sorry, Lou. Was I supposed to? No. What are you doing here? I came to get the key to the library to find out if the wind makes anyone besides my editor act weird. What are you doing here? Kendall got in an accident. Oh, is he okay? No. You got anything to eat in there? Carrots? Anything? Uh, I think I've got some sunflower seeds. Oh, boy. Give me. You sure your canary won't go hungry? Be sure to return this. Why don't you get it done tomorrow when the librarian's around? 
Because she hates my guts. Why? Because I hate her guts. Good old Alba, who sings Harold Arlen's songs while she catalogs. Billy. If I have to hear that old black magic one more time, Lou, she's a tyrant. She plays favorites like she's at Hollywood Park. I'm just not going to kiss up to her anymore. Hmm. Billy, you go on with everybody. Yeah, well, maybe not anymore, you know? Coast Guard reports a May Day off of Catalina. No other details. And I got a story slugged assault for you. Right, stay in the May Day. There's a Lou Grant in the city room. My VDT's down again. I need a guy up here fast. Tell him to take the elevator. Let me read it off your machine. Sure. You still hungry, Lou? Starved. I got some of this fruit salad left. It's mostly the little white cubes. I don't eat them. Sounds good. That's how hungry I am. What's this last sentence? According to the police, the raped woman was unharmed? That's right. I think I know what you mean, Roy. But if she was raped, she was harmed. Yeah, I guess. Why don't you change it to, um, suffered no additional injuries? You're the boss. Appreciate it. Excuse me. Guy died in that chair once. I know. That machine killed him. We'll fix her up. Listen, uh, when you find out what's wrong, can you uh, give me some idea of how long it'll take? If it can't be fixed tonight, I'll move my stuff to another desk. It's ready. Jeez. Nope, it's got that awful hum. Honey, oh, no, don't worry about that hum. It's always made that noise. Everybody's always told me to just live with it. Go oh, home. Sure. That's nice. You're welcome. How'd you like to work days? Nah, days they make you screwdrivers. Well, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, Kim. Kim. Anytime, Lou. Uh City desk. Plane crash. Hold on. Anybody heard anything about a plane crash? Nope. Nothing. There hadn't been a plane crash, sir. We haven't heard about it. In your bean field. Oh, uh-huh. Uh, uh, no, we don't have a news tip award. That's KTNS. Well, wait a minute. Don't, don't hang up. <laughs> Where's the crash? Uh, how much does the station pay? Well, well, sir, you have just won the Tribune News Tip Award. Hal, pick up three. Hang on for a second, please. Write it as full as you can. We'll make the space. You've got 35 minutes till deadline. I've got five minutes. Deadline's at 9.30 on Thursdays. They need the extra time downstairs to stop the suburban supplement. Why didn't anyone tell me? Who'd have figured you wouldn't know? Heifer ear th... Half hour early Thursday. Wonderful. Sunny desk. Hello, Charlie. How's it going? Deadlines are five minutes. Oh, yes, Thursday. Well, I won't keep you long. Listen, did I tell you the name of the hotel that Marion is staying at? No, I, I don't think you did, Charlie. Some hotel in San Francisco. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you didn't. And I, I wrote it down, and then I didn't take the note with me. Well, I wish I could help you. Hey, 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 Lou. Can you check my desk and see if the note's there? Look, Charlie, we've got five... Uh, hang on. Charlie? Yeah? It's a Paul Bunyan, but there's no number. That's not it. Paul Bunyan, that's what it says. That's the name of the chainsaw I wanted. Listen, can I call you back? Oh, sure. My daughter's eloping with some phony. Call me back. What? What? Charlie? Crash door is ready. What's it slug? Crash. 
I got more than the May Day. Let me hear it. Twelve miles this side of Catalina, it's going down. The boat's registered as uh, Amethyst. The odd Amethyst? I don't know. I'll find out. They figure 40 people are on board. Or were. Write what you've got for this edition. Stay with the Coast Guard. I'll get Billy from the library. Animal? Hi, Lou. Were you in an accident? Sort of. Larry Fox rear-ended my nose with his fist. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Be sure to tell the composing room to put the amethyst brief in a box. We made the two-star with the mayday and the crash. Nice job. Keep up the good work, Padre. I'm back. Who are you? I'm Scotty, the night copy kid. You look like a congressman at a picnic. Sir? Did you get Rossi's car back? Oh, yes. Wasn't that the darndest mix-up? Now, listen, uh, we've got a yacht going down off of Catalina, and things are going to be flying at us soon. Those poor people. Yeah. Before it all hits the fan, I want you to run down to McKenna's and buy me a large quantity of some kind of food. Sure, Lou. What are your preferences? I won't eat anything with squirrel in it. Go. They make a nice chef salad. Fine, go. Oh. OK. Who knows anything about the amethyst? The Amethyst was built in 1929 by Coleman Hodges as a personal expression of confidence in the American economy. The poor dear was dead broke, actually dead and broke, when the boat was sold just before the war to Jeffrey McAdams, who's about the only man around who spends $300,000 a year maintaining a yacht and serves canned clam chowder at dinner parties. <laughs> what else do you want to know? You're the insider. My dear, yes. I'm sure my secret's safe with you. Lou Grant. Corinne Piantadosi. Corinne Piantadosi. Is that Italian? I was married to an Italian count. Oh, Florence is marvelous from April to November. And so is the marriage. Are you going to have some time to help us out here? The pleasure would be entirely mine. Good. Billy. Uh, I need to send you out, okay? Sure, I hear the amethyst is going down. No. Uh, I think 40 people are on board. Corinne Piantadosi, meet Billy Noman. Hi. Hello. Fill Billy in on the yacht owner. Well, Jeffrey McAdams made his money in real estate, mostly in the Southwest, although he bought thousands of acres in Alaska, to which at the time we all said, kill, follow. Corinne. And of course, once the pipeline was in, we looked like the worst kind of fools. Corinne. And Jeffrey, being just a bit nouveau about everything, absolutely rubbed it in. Corinne. Am I going too fast? Corinne, a boat is sinking. What's the barest minimum that Billy has to know about the McAdams? Oh, well, he's rich, and Gwenny, his wife, is old money, and, and a little vague, but lovely. Their three children are all grown, unless you think a 24-year-old boy who lives at home and apparently wears nothing but bathing trunks has got some growing to do. <laughs> Okay, the Coast Guard estimates there are about 50 people in the water. Four are confirmed as rescued. Cubby and Jinx Matheson, Harold White. Yes, I know them. And Jake Rizek. Uh, I know a Jack Richards, old Santa Barbara money. No, this is Jake Rizek, new Las Vegas money. Do tell. Why are they taking the survivors? San Pedro. That's hardly surviving. Go down there, Billy. I'm sending Cy Woods to take pictures down there, too. Okay, fine. Uh, give Jinx a hug for me. How humiliating for Jinx. All those photographers down there, and she's sopping wet. Oh! Corinne, I want you to go to the library and pull the files on the McCanns and the Amethyst. All right. Hal, call Cy Wood in his car. Tell him forget the plane crash pictures and go down to San Pedro. I think they... I got it. Thanks. Animal? You still breathing? Yeah, my mouth. What happened? Well, I went to Mimosa Gardens and Fox showed up with his new girlfriend and he was real nice. He even joked with us about how they were going Dutch for dinner. But the only pictures I got had the restaurant sign right in the middle of the shot. And you always hate it when we give these places free publicity, so I decided I better stick around till he left. Mm -hmm. Which he did, an hour and a half later. And he was ragging his date pretty good, and I said, give me a smile so I can go home, and he let me have it. So they're witnesses? I think so. Did you get names? No. Did you call a PD? 
No. Did you call our lawyer? No, come on, Lou. I didn't do anything I was supposed to. What were you thinking? Are you a pro or not? Larry Fox punches you in the nose. You don't even get the names of witnesses. You know better. I know, I know. Nobody ever hit me before. Let me call Larry. Maybe he'll admit to it. Go ahead. I'm calling our lawyer. Howard, did I wake you? This is Lou Grant. One of our photographers got assaulted tonight. He's here. I'm putting him on. Pick up. Hello? Larry? Corinne Piantadosi, what happened? Oh, dear. Well, did you see what paper he's from? I know. I know, darling Larry. I can just imagine. Don't think I'm not a teensy bit jealous that your new lady has a Galahad who'll defend her. Uh, <laughs> Larry, my dearest, don't make any promises you aren't going to keep. <laughs> Aw. Well, now you get some ice on that hand and get some rest. Ciao. Very cagey. Cagey, my lady like behind. Margaret Pinchon can take away my job. But Larry Fox can cut me off every party list in town. Lou, phone on four. Right. It's Charlie Hume. Ah, Charlie. Charlie, I'm sorry. I forgot. It's okay. I probably shouldn't have called you again. You're busy, huh? Well, we were. It was a good time. So, uh, uh, Joni ran off with someone. She sent me a mailgram. Marion Bryan Sessions, Little Chapel in the Dunes, Las Vegas, Friday noon. So that's tomorrow. Fit to be tired. Marion is in some hotel in San Francisco. Joni's in some hotel in Vegas. I don't know what the hell is going on. Have you met the boy? He's no boy, I can tell you that. He's got to be 40 if he's the Byron I think she means. Lou, I got more on the amethyst. Uh, Charlie, I got to put you on hold. It's okay, it's okay. I, I shouldn't even be bothering. It's just that I'm... So distracted, you know. I mean, Joni is making such a big mistake. John, I gotta put you on hold now. Sure, go on, go on, go on. Seven more out of the water, all alive. The FBI isn't officially in on it, but it's made itself available. FBI? Was this accident on account of the wind? Santa Ana's are easterly. They die when they hit the water. Uh-huh. What's the FBI doing now? Well, one of the survivors was a female, age 22, who was wearing a bathing suit and an apron full of $100 bills. Gambling. Or her mother told her not to go swimming without cab fare. I wish I could remember if one of Jake Rizek's rackets was gambling. I'll do some checking. Yeah, I do. Charlie? I'm here. Do you know the yacht Amethyst? The what? The Amethyst is sinking. We were able to get that much in the second edition. Now we've got an angle that the boat was used for gambling. Isn't that Jeffrey McAdams boat? Right. Mrs. Pinchon goes way back with that family. Should I give her a call? Well, I'm not sure she's at home. She was all dressed up when I saw her this afternoon. You think she might be on the amethyst? Wait a second. Wait a second. She did say something about, about tonight costing her a lot of money. I'll try to find her and get back to you as soon as I can. Yeah, if the phone is busy, it's because I'm trying every hotel in San Francisco looking for Marion. Good luck. Al, let's go to the gambling angle in your lead on the amethyst. Audrey, did Mrs. Pinchon leave a number where she might be reached tonight? Try and find her. Yeah. Roy, keep an eye on the names you get from the Coast Guard. Mrs. Pinchon might be on board. Where'd you find her? She's home in bed, Mr. Grant. Mrs. Pinchon, you don't sound like yourself. Oh, the Santa Annas have kicked up my sinuses. That's why I'm here. Thank God. We thought you were out gambling. Owning a newspaper is all the gambling I need to do. Why would you care if I was gambling? Because the, the amethyst is singing off Catalina. And we also found out that the McAdams have been using it as a gambling ship. Wait a minute, Mr. Grant. The McAdams have nothing to do with that. They own the amethyst. That's right. But they lease it to someone who gives private, very legal parties. You weren't planning to tie the McAdams family into gambling, were you? No. Not, not if they lease the boat out, no. Al, hold up a second. Were the McAdams on board? We don't know. Just a moment. 
Roy, give me some of those names again. Uh, Covey and Jinx Matheson, Harold White. Harold White and Covey Matheson and his wife were. Oh, my God. That's Monty's party. Monty? Montgomery Ellison. Every year, he takes his whole gang and their wives out to Catalina. It's tonight. Oh, Mr. Grant, would you please let me know if they're all right? Yeah, as soon as we know. Oh, thank you, Mr. Grant. Right, I'll get back to you. Al, take the McAdams out of the league. They're on the boat, don't they? But it wasn't their party. Put them further down the story. I don't want to... Fuck out of... Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Sackler says I'm on sick leave the rest of the week. They want to be able to show Fox hurt me bad enough to keep me off work. He says I'm supposed to go home. Go! I can't drive my car like this. When I lower my head, my nose bleeds. Where's the copy kid? Getting your food. Oh. Lou, the end of the story's ready. Did you fix the lead? Like you fix a cap. You know, I didn't want to do this shoot in the first place. City desk. Thought you'd want to know, Lou. I found Marion. Great. Is everything okay? I think the whole damn world has gone crazy. She wants to go to the wedding. Lou, what am I going to do? About what? The lawyer says I should be home resting. Take a cab home. Charlie? She's going alone, I can tell you that. Did I tell you that the guy's a travel agent? He's a 36-year-old divorced travel agent. Joni's in a Ph.D. program in French. I know what he's thinking. Uh, what's he thinking? See, he's got it figured that she'll come to work for him. And with her inside track, she'll help him get better rooms and French hotels. <laughs> She's got all of that education, and she can't even see it. I can't get a cab downtown at this hour. And besides, I don't have any dough. Here's five. Lou, Billy's at San Pedro. Hold it, Charlie. Lou. Animal, go over to that desk and call a cab. Five bucks won't get me halfway. Then sign for it. Charlie? Charlie. Under any other circumstances, we'd be sitting around having a couple of beers, and I'd be telling you about my daughters. You'd be telling me about how when Joni was a little girl, you'd go for Sunday drives, and you'd let her steer, and how their marriage would be over by Christmas. But we don't have time for that. So, Joni's a wonderful kid, and it's the 1980s, and I'll call you at the end of the shift. Billy. Hi, Lou. Don't waste my time, or what do you got? Three deaths confirmed. They got the bodies. Got it. Three drowned. Not drowned. The bodies were badly burned. One survivor that I talked to mentioned something about an explosion. It looks like somebody blew up the amethyst. <laughs> Hello, is this the press room? Mr. Foreman? Well, this is Lou at the desk. Listen, Bob. Bob? Uh, we're going to chase the home edition. I'd like you guys to hold for a remake of page one. What are you so salty about? Listen, I can get you the Pittsburgh score right now. Oh, you already got it? Well, uh, there's still a, uh, a game in the Pacific Coast League. Uh, the Hawaiian Islanders are knocking the stunning out of Albuquerque 12-3 to in the bottom of the seventh. <laughs> yeah. That is a surprise, isn't it? Who's pitching? Uh, listen, can I get back to you on that? Sure. Bob. Bob. Right. Thanks. Okay. I want a new lead on Amethyst. Include the fatalities and the quote on the explosion. You see, we need... I got it. All right, they're going to stop the run whenever we've got new information, so we're going to be revising all night. We know what chasing is. You want to lighten up a little on the cheerleading? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you sure are a mean one. What kind of preacher are you? Terrible. Mm. You know, we don't have much on Jake Rizek in our library. It's probably in that special file we've got on organized crime. Okay, I'll check it out. Cy Woods just called, He's sending his film over in a cab. You know, you know what I could do? I could put it in the soup. We can keep him at the scene longer. No, no, you're sick. I don't want to go against our lawyer. I'll feel better if I stay. Pay me under another name. Oh, so that's how you guys do it. I'm back. What'd you get? Well, McKenna's kitchen was closed. They wouldn't budge on that, but I got you popcorn. That's it? That's all they had. 
I really hope it's fresh. Now, I could go to the all-night market off Figueroa, uh, or I could go to Chinatown. I want you to go to San Pedro. Oh, great. Seafood? No, shipwreck. Cy Woods is sending a set of film back in a cab. I want you to go out and get the rest at the Coast Guard station. Right. I located the organized crime file. Crime? It's in Charlie's file cabinet. You got the key? No. You know who's got it? Who? Hugh Kendall. Well, you're going to have to send somebody out to Kendall's to get it. No time. Kim, Lou Grant, come up and bring your tools. You know, we really got to do something about this system. I mean, when you got something as important as an organized crime file and you can't get to it... Well, when they set it up, they didn't allow for the night editor swerving the Mr. Coyote and breaking his collarbone. I guess no systems fail safe. Because you're the best caterer in town. That's how I knew. Now, I want to know absolutely everyone who was invited. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. With his wife? I didn't think so. I got the dope on Jake Rizek. He's the one who holds a lease on the Amethyst. He sets up private gambling parties. And? And he's got a brother, Carl, who testified last year against some of their Arizona competition, the Menifee family. How do you like revenge as a motive? Well, it's certainly time-honored. Try to call the brother. Think you can find a Menifee? I'll wake up half a Scottsdale trying. in her arm. She was a guest. No, I'm sorry. I was, I was talking about the three fatalities. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, the Coast Guard has confirmed that there were three fatalities. You mean there were deaths? I really thought you knew. Here, I want to find a place for you. It's my fault. Rossi, dear, is it true? Are you taking this it's not your fault, believe me. Excuse really me. Wasn't. Excuse me. Could I have your name, please? Menifee. Russ Menifee. My wife, Charlotte. My daughter, Chris. Russ Menifee was on board with his wife and daughter. Oh, he was such a great suspect. Keep working on it. Sure. Rats. Lou, I've got the insert to Hal's Amethyst story. It should slide right in after the fourth graph. From the silver lining department, however, word comes that many of the city's most sought-after party-goers chose to pass up the Amethyst soiree in favor of an antique reception for Ambassador Rostov at Le Café Fragonard. Karen? Yes. Good. Very nice. Thanks. Uh, call Mrs. Pinchon. Make sure that she knows money else is safe. I'll fill her in on everything. She'll never guess who was there with someone, not her husband. <laughs> Sign Wood got some nice shots. In there. Hal? Hmm? Take this bilge Corinne wrote and make it sound like news. She's written this like... I got it. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Let's brainstorm here for a few minutes. I want us to come up with something that'll give us an edge. Where's Corinne? She's talking to Pinchon. Excuse me, Mrs. Pinchon. Corinne, come in here. Uh, can I make this a conference call? Thanks. Can you hear me, Mrs. Pinchon? Yes, Mr. Graff. We're in a conference room, and I'd like you to stay with us and offer any information you can about the McAdams and Montgomery Ellison. All right. Okay. Now, do we know how long Jake Rizek has leased the Amethyst? Three years. 18 months. 
Since 1977. I got it in the files. Excuse me. Hello. Uh, go on, Miss Pigeon. Uh, the amethyst is leased only six months out of the year. And the rest of the time it remains with the family. What do the McAdams do with it? I believe uh, Jeffrey McAdams' younger son has use of it. Little Jeffrey? I heard he was living at home because his family cut off his money. That's right. His father told me little Jeffrey was going to have to maintain the boat on his own. What year was this taken? Ought to be on the back. 79. What's his other flag? Uh, I don't suppose the McAdams have a family crest? The yacht must have been registered in another country. I was on it about a year ago at a party, and I remember some pretty shady characters. Of course, it might have been the crew. Why are we giving up on the organized crime angle? Let me see this. Yeah. You bury people at sea? Who you got in mind? You own your own boat? Yeah. What's the flag? Columbia. Columbia, the gem of the ocean, or Columbia, South America? South America. Does Jeffrey McAdam have business in Columbia? Nothing I'm aware of. Oh, no, no. I think his real estate holdings are strictly in this country. Then how can a kid who doesn't work and isn't given any dough by his family afford to cruise the Pacific six months a year? I can think of a way. What if little Jeffrey's dealing dope? What if the Amethyst is the world's fanciest junk runner? And if he is, he's in direct competition with the Mexican Mafia. Yeah, who might want to teach him a lesson? Oh, it, it doesn't track. This isn't the kid's time of year with a boat. Excuse me, I think you're wrong. A little Jeffrey would ordinarily have use of the boat for another two weeks. But Monty persuaded him to give it up early so he could have his party. Uh, strictly speaking, this is still the boy's season for the yacht. Corinne, do you have a home address for the McAdams? 11412 Paseo del Mar in Pasadena. I got Burroughs in Pasadena. Hold on, Mr. Grant. The boy is not in Pasadena. He's living at the beach house. Who do we have at the beach? Who can I wake up out there? Yes? Hi, Jeffrey. I'm Mark Donovan. I work for the Tribune. I hope I'm not out of line coming here this late. No, no, I saw. I heard about your boat. I'm really sorry. Yeah. My folks called. It's sick. It's totally sick. I was wondering if you'd heard that it may not have been an accident. No. Uh, Why would somebody do something like that? I have no idea. I guess your folks must be pretty upset. Yeah. I'm gonna go see my folks tomorrow morning, see if there's anything I can do to help. Look, I'm gonna get some sleep now, okay? Thanks, Jeff. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Yeah, sure. just wondering where you're going. Well, that's none of your business. I don't think it's a smart move to try running away. Three people have been killed, and you can probably help the cops nail the guys that did it. Forget it, man. That's their problem. I'm not gonna sit around here and get my head blown off. They tried to get me once. I'm not gonna give them a second shot. <laughs> FBI involved. Drug link rumored. Good. Want to join us for breakfast, Lou? Well, the place is still serving dinner. It's a deal. Corinne? Only if you do the ordering. Uh, how about you, Billy? Come on with us, Billy. Don't worry about the way you look. Okay, Corinne, I'll try. Animal? Sure. I don't know if I can eat too much, though. Al? No. Come on. Use your head, Lou. I'm the guy who stays on till the morning man shows. Oh, you're right. Jeez. Scotty, how about coming with us? 
Emperor Ricardo died. Damn it! Oh, jeez. Rats! Why now? Oh, I know how you feel. He was a great man. If he was so great, why didn't he die in the day shift? I owe Donovan ten bucks. <laughs> Everybody ready? My purse is in Charlie's office. Charlie? Oh, go ahead. I'll, uh, I'll meet you there. I gotta call Charlie back. Yeah. Charlie! Oh, Lou, hi. Were you sleeping? Yeah, but it's okay. Listen, uh, I talked to Joni. And? You know why they're getting married in Vegas? Byron got two extra seats on a charter. Brian, no. It's because she remembered that that's where Marion and I were married. And she said that we'd worked out okay, and she wanted her marriage to get off to a good start. <laughs> Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, then Brian got on and said he'd really like it if we were at the ceremony tomorrow. And? So we're gonna go. I mean, he booked the, the, the plane and the hotel room and everything. Nice going, Papa. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Lou, I know that Donovan is, is covering for you. Do you think that you could cover for me till Monday? Sure. Have a good time. Kiss Joni for me. Will do. Yeah, thanks. Good night, Lou. Hi, Charlie. <sighs> what would you do, Hal? You had a choice between eating and sleeping. Probably drink. I think I'll sleep. What time do you get off? 7.30. Wake me up before you go, will you? Sure. This was kind of fun tonight, huh? Oh, yeah. Fun. Sacrifice children to honor their king? Unravel the riddle of the Maya tonight on an all new Ancient Mysteries. Now, Broadway can be brutal when an investor is killed. Janet Lee stars in Columbo next on AE.